following program on Ave Verna 24 is classified for general audience. It is intended for all ages. It contains little or no violence, no strong language, and little or no sexual dialogue or situations. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Gen XYZ where we bring to you contemporary issues that have to do with the youth and of course the struggles that, are, that the youth are facing in modern times. Now, mental health is not a new topic to our programs and of course we've been speaking about this for quite a few episodes prior but it's always important to stress on exactly how important mental health is in current times and to speak on this we have with us a very special guest who is not a new face on this show, Dr. Ashok Priyadarshan. Doctor, hello and Hi. thanks for joining us once again. Of That's course, it. you're not a new face. You've yes. been here before <laughs> and you've spoken to our viewers about quite a few topics when it comes yeah. to mental health. And of course, there's never enough clarification when it comes to this topic, which is very yes. vast and yes. vague. Now, Doctor, to start off, I'd like to ask you, this has been quite the contested definition for a long time, considering mm -hmm. exactly how you know intuitive uh, health sciences and mm -hmm. everything is developing when it mm -hmm. comes to mental health and all. Mm -hmm. You know, back in obviously our parents would tell us, you know, what's mental health? They'd slap us on the face and you know tell us rip the bandage right off, and they tell us deal with it and grow up. That's how our old generation grew up. But right now the youth is facing much more nuanced issues, and the current climate is completely different to what yes. it was during yes. our elders. This time. Yes, yes, so obviously. doctor, with, with your experience in the psychiatric field, could you just tell us exactly how severe mental illnesses have become right now? Obviously, uh, now of course, you know, previously, I uh, you know, uh, two, three years before actually we were hit by the pandemic and right after actually, again, uh, we are in a huge uh, crisis because of this, you know, the financial issues. I think, you know, both of these uh, 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 factors actually have uh, had a, you know, huge impact on, you know, especially youth, not only youth, but also the rest of the people as well. And okay. when it comes to, you know, especially uh, psychology, right, psychology, we, we, we tend to focus on their mind and also uh, uh, behavior right now uh, when it comes to youth obviously now we nowadays we come across you know lots of individuals with depression as well as anxiety so basically pathological anxiety as well as you know pathological depression but i don't think that you know a research has been conducted in in you know with regard to that and find out whether you know youth people youth you know the young 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 generation uh, has uh, you know is who is suffering from you know depression and anxiety but you know according to the patients you know the patients who come to me and as well as you know certain other practitioners so what they normally say is that actually they seem to be having you know lots of issues especially you know depression as well as anxiety not only depression as well as you know anxiety but also certain other you know minor hassles as well you know how to uh, continue their you know uh, uh, lifestyle and 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 you know how to lead their you know uh, family life as well as inside the family also there are you know lots of issues as well okay. so these things are actually uh, uh, common you know nowadays yeah and also <coughs> considering mental health mm -hmm. when it comes to the youth yes. there is quite a lot of spotlight on the mental health illness that is depression yes now when it comes to depression what you mentioned doctor with pathological depression yes. and pathological anxiety yes. Yes. there is a possibility yes. yes but right now with the current climate the youth are facing the competitiveness of the yes. rat race yes. and of course the economic crisis the economic depression yes. as uh, it would have been put yes. uh, is greatly affecting uh, of course youth all around the country now could you please explain to us more about the triggers uh, the trigger point of mental health illnesses such as depression yes obviously now uh, like I always say when it comes to uh, 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 you know psychology obviously we focus on each and every individual right or client right uh, based on three aspects biological uh, psychological as well as social aspects. So this is known biopsychosocial model. Every practitioner is, you know, well much aware of these three aspects. Okay. So if something happens to one of these, or all these three three things, so the well-being of individual 
uh, will be you know in balance so under these circumstances obviously now you see that uh, uh, there is this you know the huge financial crisis in our country so which means the social aspect is imbalanced right so as a result of that what happens is so it has a huge impact on the person's psychology as well as you know the biology biology in the sense like you know according to the way we think of course you know your biology your body chemistry gets changed as well right so which means that there is a relationship between your thinking style as well as neurotransmitters as well as you know the physical changes and the biological changes and also biochemistry right so if the society right if society is imbalanced in, in terms of you know financial aspects which means it has a huge impact on individual psychology as well as uh, 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 the biological aspect so that is one of the major concerns that we have at the moment so doctor now speaking about the biopsychosocial <laughs> model as well how can one confirm if you need to get checked for mental illness now there yes. is so much going on there's a lot of yes. noise when yes. it comes to mental illness and this topic Obviously. how do you get yourself confirmed that you might have a problem with this issue yes actually it's a very good question actually because people 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 do not know that they have certain issues like that okay actually we we when we when we are you know discussing about these issues of course you know we ask them to be focused on you know basic factors like 4d's so we always mention about 4d factors if you have this you know the 4d factors so you need to be right so which means that you have to focus on these aspects and it's better to you know consult someone and it's better to you know uh, go to meet a practitioner which means d is in the sense distress distress in the sense psychological pain right if you are in a psychological pain which means you know it is something that you have to focus on and uh, there is another d that is called uh, uh, dysfunction in dysfunction in the sense now of course when we are functions we are you know having this day to day activities and etc sometimes you know when something happens you know bad of course you know you tend to uh, deviate from your day to day activities so dysfunctioning is there so now you are having your daily routine and etc sometimes uh, when something bad happens to you you just deviate from your day to day activity so the dysfunction is the second factor so third one is the deviant right deviation so you deviate you deviate from your day to day activities that's the third one uh, next one is quite important that is called danger so that is actually sometimes people commit suicide danger danger to one self or danger to another person so the danger is another factor so if you have these four factors like i mentioned distress is there distress means psychological pain right if someone is having psychological pain that means it is something that you have to focus on the second one is dysfunction right dysfunction in the sense like i said right so you just deviate from your day to day activities right you are not able to function properly if if you come to you know uh, a depression of course they don't like to talk uh, with others actually they just they, they they tend to be isolated right and the deviant and the next one is uh, 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 danger right it is where actually you tend to you know commit suicide at the end of the day so so there is this you know the relationship between depression as well as you know suicide because we think that you know uh, uh, committing suicide is a spontaneous act right but it's not it's a it's a sequential process obviously right so uh, these things actually uh, it, it, it they should be you not know, taken into account right if someone is experiencing these four d's I see now the 4Ds are actually yes. a very important point to stress on yes. as well considering how easy it is to detect if we know exactly what the signs are to look for when it comes to mental health but now that we know exactly how we can tell if we have to get ourselves che checked for mental illnesses could you please explain to us uh, doctor having your experience you know working with a variety of clients and patients with different disorders yes. and issues could you tell us among the youth what do you see as the biggest concerns of mental illnesses biggest concerns of mental health? basically is it more depression and anxiety are there other specified bipolar disorder or personality disorders are there other illnesses that take the spotlight over general issues that we speak about all the time like depression and anxiety uh, it is hard to generalize actually but uh, basically I, i i assume that since you know there is no research been done on that but i basically assume that depression and anxiety is, seem to be you know uh, prevalent nowadays obviously right so they 
they are common in a in a in a society nowadays even though like i said there is no research been done so i can't actually exactly say this is what we can see but according to uh, the reports as well as you know the patients that we come across in our in our day to day lives uh, in in our, in our uh, practices obviously you see we see that you know uh, uh, depression and uh, anxiety are, are prominent now when it comes to depression and anxiety you now sadness and uh, so we experience you know emotions right so obviously experiencing emotion uh, is obviously a, a general thing it's 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 so common but it can be once again pathological now when it comes to anxiety obviously you experience pathological uh, 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 fear we experience fear right and we experience sadness but it can be pathological as well you know that mind is working just like a pendulum right it 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 moves here to there which means that you just get stuck in the past or sometimes you get stuck in the future right the more you get stuck in the in the past the, there is you know the the, the more you uh, uh, get depressed in most cases right so this can be pathological as well right when it comes to anxiety obviously now you are worried about your future what is going to happen so under these circumstances obviously we don't know what to come next right it's really hard you know as as you know according to what they say of course you know they what what they normally say they how it's really hard to uh, lead this life and etc so the anxiety fear is a huge issue they 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 are worried about their future and also what is going to happen so this can be pathological as well right it's not mere fear but you know it can be pathological so as a result of that you might experience anxiety so depression so basically it's a mood disorder there are different types of you know uh, 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 disorders which come under this you know the basic category called in the mood disorder anxiety is also a, a kind of a family and there are certain other uh, disorders as well for instance generalized anxiety phobia and etc basically what i have uh, seen is that uh, as a mood disorder depression is there severe depression mild moderate and etc so dip, dip, depression is prevalent you know undoubtedly on the other hand anxiety basically generalized anxiety so these things are prevalent uh, uh, i mean uh, in the youth you know uh, nowadays as we can see i see doctor now considering pathological depression and anxiety there's of course you know considering the situation that yes. we are in as well it yes. causes a lot of anxiety yes. and a lot of depression and through that it can stem to genuine medical conditions where you can be diagnosed now doctor i'd like to speak to you about exactly now there are so many conditions and stimuli that can cause depression to you know be uh, occurring among the youth but could you tell us a little bit about how there is this consensus where depression is hereditary hereditary anxiety is hereditary like there is a certain uh, consensus that goes about where like if you if you have a family history of yes. such a disorder it could be you know prevalent yes. among you as well and yes. it's not just your environment yes. could you please just explain yes yes that is right that's why i told you actually at the very beginning that we need to focus on these three aspects biological psychological and social so which means that there can be you know this you know hereditary factor as well so basically the environment and heredity both these factors seem to be having quite you know uh, influential when it comes to you know, depression and the other developmental uh, areas as well now uh, the biological in the sense now you know that there are neurotransmitters okay so there are certain changes in neurotransmitters and these changes these fluctuations of neurotransmitters could take place because of the thinking pattern as well that is the psychological aspects which means when someone is experiencing like uh, uh, cognitive distortions right cognitive distortions when it comes to cognitive distortions right the thinking errors as a result of that it can you know come up with certain biological changes changes in neurotransmitters as well now let's you know keep those things aside now if you take you know this you know the social factor right economic depression so as a result of this you know the imbalance like i said so it might have a huge impact on both these aspects thinking style as well as the biology uh, the neurotransmitters and and the uh, and etc so this is how these three things are you know interconnected i see and also considering of course what you just mentioned doctor with everything being interconnected yeah. there's quite a little bit of a uh, you know struggle when it comes to balancing things and yes. staying afloat in such a turbulent atmosphere mm -hmm. so in regards to that doctor uh, we'd like to know i'm pretty sure our viewers would very much like to know now that we can identify and now that we know exactly how depression and anxiety will function in the youth how exactly can we help combat it how can we keep our mental health and mental well-being to a sane extent how do we 
maintain ourselves mentally right actually that's a question it's it's really hard to answer that question because you know it's not that easy to generalize that is the fact because you know in in discussions like this of course you know we tend to generalize but but it you know that may not you know work all the time because now when it comes to psychotherapy as well as you know counseling etc et so you tend to focus on the individuals conceptual world right you need to you need to think about the individuals conceptual world so your conceptuality is different from mine obviously right so the theory that i apply to you may not be applicable to me as well understand what i say so basically what i say is that if you undergo certain like you know certain uh, uh, factors related to four d's like i mentioned right it's better to you know consult a practitioner that is the best thing to do you just can you know generalize these things and you can say it's better to you know uh, 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 go out and you know uh, do certain exercises and change your diet and etc so but what i say is that saying is so easy right but what i say is that if you if you undergo these things obviously it's need to consult a practitioner right under the under the supervision of these practitioners then only you can move forward that is the best thing to do as i have understood so far i see doctor so there's quite a lot to delve into this yes, topic as yes, well yes. and considering exactly how much more we have to discuss on yes. this program as well i guess yes. let's take a really short break we'll be back right after this Welcome back to Gen XYZ. We were in discussion with Dr. Ashok Priyadarshan and we were talking about mental health issues and exactly how we can tackle these problems when it comes to the youth. Now, before we took the break, doctor, we were talking about how we can maintain mental mm -hmm. well-being. We were talking specifically about depression and anxiety and pathological depression and anxiety and exactly how, you know, it has affected the youth currently. Now, I'd like to continue on this topic considering that these are recognized medical conditions there is an unfortunate issue in probably mostly other countries in the world also experiences but mainly in sri lanka and traditional countries such as sri lanka there's always that problem you know the parents when it comes to helping diagnose their children yes. if they think there's a problem they'd always you know plausible deniability they would deny it and there would be an issue where you know you deny it until the point where it becomes a very severe issue now what do you have to say about this doctor when it comes to parents and helping the children get diagnosed and of course helping children through mental illnesses what do you think about this yeah indeed it's a very good question actually now not only parents uh, but also you know the rest of the family members as well as you know outsiders as well they should be really vigilant about the individuals you know the the, the the youngsters you know the mentality of course you know uh, what happens in most cases is that we are just uh, isolated in our own worlds you know that what happens you know nowadays of course we have to you know uh, uh, go after you know these financial goals and every, everything so uh, you know because of the reason sometimes you tend to forget your children of course you know that happens because because of this you know the current situation and etc so uh, when it comes to you know this you know the vigilance parents need to be you know strongly vigilant about their you know of, of their children especially because if because when it comes to depression sometimes they might sh they might not you know they, they may not show it to 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 others of course sometimes you know there is something called it's not you know clinically mentioned but there is something called smiling depression right some people you know smile and in behind the smile of course you know they tend to be you know uh, uh, suffering a lot you know they have you know depression that is one of another uh, concerns that we have to focus on so anyway uh, parents especially as well as the other family members they need to focus on their children and how uh they behave and how 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 they actually uh, deal with others and also what what is happening to their mood and etc like i said you need to see uh, i mean parents as well they need to stick to this you know the four d's as well so it just, it's just like a golden rule like right? golden theory right? it's better you know focused on these things like um once again when it comes to depression we have heard of you know uh, lots of uh, suicidal cases you know within last uh, last uh, few uh, months especially when it comes to youngsters right there is this you know the correlation between depression and also suicide right so uh, when someone is having severe depression there is this you know the probability for uh, someone to you know commit suicide so that is there and suicidal attempt is not a spontaneous act once again right so it's it's a it's a it's a sequence it's a process of course and this process could only be detected when the outsiders and also the family members and the parents are vigilant 
right so basically before someone uh, is committing suicide they they have this you know the suicidal thoughts and signs and threats and finally they complete right sometimes they say that you know i'm going to commit suicide and then sometimes you know nobody you listens. yeah nobody is listening and they might think that you know he is just saying and the person yeah he is just saying and uh, he won't you know do it but nowadays clinically and you know psychologically we think we say that if someone is saying like that if someone is threatening like that it is something that we need to focus on it is something that we have to take into account so parents especially they have to be you know vigilant about these things like like i said you know if they deviate from their friends and day to day activities if they tend to be isolated right sometimes you know they live in you know dark dark rooms and without talking to anybody else right so if if this happens for instance you know the sadness if it persists for at least two weeks or more uh with the combination of uh, certain other behavior cognitive and physical symptoms you might suspect that the person seems to be having you know depression like you know behavioral changes could take place like deviation and etc and irritability and uh, a, a low mood and uh, loss of you know interest and also when it comes to um, uh, you know sleep sometimes they might be having certain uh, disturbances when it comes to sleeping right so certain issues like that so it's better to be you know uh, concerned about those things I see, doctor. Now that is quite the uh, conclusion when it comes to discussing dis- depression and anxiety, and of course, uh, how you are supposed to deal with it as a person looking from the outside in, and if you are the one on the inside, yes. how you should be reaching out for help, and how other people should be noticing your signs, and how it should be a cohesive environment to help your mental health get better overall. Now, now that we've spoken about depression and anxiety, uh, as we have done previously as well. I would like to speak about a much less spoken about topic which is bipolar disorder. Now I understand that it's a very specific topic and it goes on a case by case basis doctor but there's always that problem where it goes undiagnosed because uh, you know threats like the depression and anxiety take up such a huge sphere when it comes to the talk about mental health. So doctor could you please with your experience explain to us exactly what bipolar disorder is all about? Yeah bipolar disorder is again it comes under mood disorders right which means that you experience two episodes here one is this you know the mania the manic episode as well as uh, the, uh, the the depressive episode sometimes you know it swings like this so in in bipolar disorder so that that is something that we could see from you know a uh, 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 patient so it's sometimes really hard to work with them because you know because of this you know the mood swings mood swing is uh, one of the one of the major things that you could see in you know bipolar disorder in mania of course they have this you know uh, bizarre type of you know behavior in the in, in the meantime when it come to uh, when it comes to uh, depression they have this you know the pathological sadness so both these things can happen so uh, now of course you know uh, 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 they need to undergo kind of you know medication to 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 minimize these issues once again um, in addition to medication like i said you know if one, when you when you approach to an individual you tend to focus on this biopsychosocial approach biologically you, the person needs to undergo uh, medication and 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 after that uh, there should be you know psychotherapies to address the psychological aspect as well for instance we use uh, uh, this uh, the, the 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 popular therapy called you know dialectical behavioral therapy which is ideal for uh, certain issues like that and but without medication of course you can't you know move move on uh, once again the diagnosis uh, should be made by a professional in the field and then only we can understand whether the person is having this you know the two episodes and then only we can you know move on with the treatment uh, plan doctor you mentioned that it should be diagnosed you know professionally and yes. of course with psychiatric help yes, yes. because that's very much a misspoken about miscommunicated topic when it comes to fields of youth as well and in general when it comes to mental health considering how new the discussion on it is now doctor with your experience i'd like to pull from your personal experience a little bit how have you gone about diagnosing bipolar disorder and how can youth be worried you know what are my warning signs apart from the two mood swings what can i do to prevent me from you know further tumbling down the hole that is bipolar disorder how have you tackled diagnosis now again when uh, uh, when it comes to bipolar unlike you know depression it can be sometimes you know uh, uh, certain unrealistic tendencies where actually the individual is not much aware of it that is the issue so the individual is not aware of it. there are you know certain neurotic issues as well as you know psychotic issues when it comes to neurotic issues so 
individuals they are they are they are they, they know that you know they are undergoing certain things like that but you know when when it comes to certain uh, um, uh, psychotic issues so they are not in this you know the realistic world so they are out of this you know the realistic world in such cases of course you know they don't know that they are having certain issues like that so, uh, so the outside especially like we discussed earlier the parents as well as you know the individuals they could notice that okay this this individual must be must be having you know certain uh, kind of you know deviant tendency deviant behaviors and unrealistic behaviors as such so then uh, parents and also the rest of the people around could you know take the person to a practitioner so the person himself or herself may not be aware that you know the, he is having this particular uh issue so that is uh, one of the things that we can see and you know the psychotic issues that is exactly why that cohesive environment mm -hmm. is necessary you need to be able to notice the signs of other people before you can notice your own signs when it comes to dangerous issues such as bipolar yeah. disorder where if it goes undiagnosed yes. it could lead to much worse scenarios leading to suicide or leading to danger to other people yeah. as well so doctor i'd like to ask you how exactly now that you're someone from the outside looking in, now that you mentioned that it's very hard for us to diagnose ourselves with any signs when it comes to bipolar disorder, how as a person looking in from the outside can we reach out to someone that we think might be now? While the whole you know diagnosis issue is complete, how do you offer support to someone that has experienced bipolar disorder and is currently going through the symptoms? Once again, uh, it's really hard. Uh, to take them for you know uh, basically uh, treatments that is one of the things that we uh, come across uh, because normally with the mediation of their parents as well as you know the people around actually they come for you know certain sessions right and like I said uh, 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 when they come for session actually sometimes you know uh, because of certain stigmas I suppose right so in Sri Lanka obviously people do not like to uh, continue their you know treatments even you know when it comes to psychological treatments as well as Definitely. other things of course they, they don't like to you know continue continue their you know uh, 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 treatments on the other hand so one of the other uh, issues that we come across is that uh, they have certain other ideas about these sort of you know uh, 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 mental issues like you know uh, when it comes to mania and etc they might be thinking you know it it, may, it is not a psychological disorder it's something else like that it is applicable to certain other psychotic uh, disorders as well so that is another thing so uh, uh, basically if uh, uh, if, if, if a patient comes uh, for you know treatments of course you know uh, the biggest task is to you know continue the treatment and and it's it's the responsibility of uh, the the, the uh, parents as well as the family members to help the individual continue uh, their treatment so that is indeed a challenging task I see and of course the start is all, always very you know very yes. hard to keep up but yes. when it comes to things like constant therapy and constant yes. psychotherapy there's always that issue of continuing and yes, yes there is quite the stigma when it comes yes. to uh, this issue as well but when considering psychiatric guidance now in your experience doctor you have obviously treated multiple patients with a variety of different uh, you know case types and of course each case is different to its yes, own yes. but on general why despite you know generality being very uh, foreign concept yeah, yes, when it comes yes, to mental yes. health how exactly have you seen people being like you know coming into therapy like why have, how what was the initial push was it a personal push or was it something from the internet where they learned about this information and then decided okay maybe i should try this out maybe they, i have a problem what have you seen has pushed people towards psychotherapy and therapy in general yes basically i'm into uh, therapies you know psychotherapies because i'm not into you know medication and etc but what i have seen is that basically like i said uh, there are you know two types of you know categories that we can see uh, under you know psychological disorders one is this you know the neurotic the other one is psychotic obviously psychotic individuals those who are in you know uh, uh, those who are in, uh, those who are not in this you know the realistic world of course right and uh, they may not you know come for you know uh, 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 psychological sessions or, 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 or other you know treatments uh, uh, willingly right so with the help of you know certain individuals around uh, them of course you know they come for you know certain sessions but people with neurotic issues of course you know they know that 
right even early signs of depression when they get to know that you know there are certain early signs of depression so uh, am i in trouble right so certain issues like that so then they decide themselves okay so i have to talk to someone right now now they are very much aware of those things because of this you know the uh, media as well as you know the information uh, the, the, they are they are they are prevalent nowadays so they know that you know they need the uh, guidance so unlike you know those days of course now there is this tendency even youth of course you know they don't stop themselves they move forward and they just uh, go for sessions which is a very good thing and which is a plus point and it is something that we have seen uh, within last uh, few few years of course two or three years perhaps. that's quite the positive trend doctor and that's very glad to hear that as well yes. but there is a slight bit of a negative edge i feel like when it comes to attending therapy as well where there's this problem you know it's almost like how we take medicine a lot of people get the antibiotic prescribed but yes. then they don't take the antibiotic for the course of the duration that the doctor has prescribed for them but now when it comes to therapy also there is a small issue like that where it comes because like therapy feels like the whole package when it comes to cure and diagnosis and of course maintenance of mental health how exactly do you see people tackling the issue of being i'd say lazy with keeping up their mental health where you know i went to therapy that's enough is that true doctor or do you need to keep it up with yourself as well like is there a personal set of goals that you need to keep up apart from attending psychotherapy uh basically it's a, once again it's a good question like if someone is undergoing you know medication so it could be sometimes uh, for instance if you take you know depression uh you need to if it is severe of course you need to undergo medication with undoubtedly right it's it's there uh but you know when it comes to youth i i i think i i suppose uh, their tendency and um, is quite different right in 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 comparison to other other individuals of course you know they are they seems to be you know they seem to be quite concerned about their health right they like to continue of course you know and then suppose that you need to um, uh continue med- medication for at least you know 6 months they stick to it unlike you know adults adults in the sense elderly Definitely. people right and then they are really you know uh it's it's indeed a positive point of course you know uh, they like to continue even when it comes to therapies of course you know they regularly participate in therapies that is what i have seen right in comparison to adults of course so uh, that is a plus point and um youth uh, seems to be quite you know we'll say uh, informative and uh, they're knowledgeable about you know these aspects I suppose I see that's very good to hear considering mm-hmm. exactly you know the trend in mm-hmm. Sri Lanka and of course bettering mental health overall will lead to a better nation overall as yes. well there's a lot more for us to discuss yeah. doctor but before that let's take a very short break you're watching Gen XYZ everyone welcome back to gen xyz and we were in discussion with dr ashok and we were talking about exactly how mental health issues are pertaining to the youth and of course especially regarding disorders like bipolar disorder and depression and anxiety and pathological depression and anxiety now before we left off for the break doctor we were talking about exactly the stigma when it comes to diagnosing mental health issues going for treatment and even talking about it overall has become quite a stigma when it comes to the older generation it seems to be trickling down a little bit into the youth despite the you know constant effort to keep up with mental health and exactly how important it is could you tell us doctor with your experience have you experienced first hand how terribly that stigma has affected your patients and how terribly it has affected exactly the conversation regarding mental health yeah uh, stigma is still there of course uh, now you see when you when you go to especially in the rural areas like you know this in you know, the urban areas of course uh, now you know individuals in urban areas of course you know uh, i don't you know marginalize i don't you know do certain things like that but you know that is what i could you know see of course you know that's what we could see obviously now uh, there is this you know stigma in certain areas as well certain rural uh, areas as well where actually they are reluctant to go for you know certain session because uh, 
they they are worried that they will be you know uh, uh, labeled as you know Shunned, yes yes of course you know that is they are still but you know with uh, with 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 certain you know information and etc now youth special actually uh they seem to be uh, uh, going for sessions actually like i said you know it's a plus point because they know how it how important it is to go for you know certain sessions because there are certain situations actually when you are having uh, certain mental issues psychological issues you need the help you need the assistance of you know professionals that is that is i mean they, they know about these things so uh, in that case of course in me it's better to you know focus on this you know the positive aspect and i think uh, uh, there are you know certain you know people like that of course you know the stigma could be there but still uh, there is this you know the positive side as well people now youth especially they go for certain sessions and it's a very you know a plus point actually uh, and even we are really satisfied uh, you know, uh, with that actually and of course uh, considering exactly you know rural areas might have that issue but of course when it comes to you know more urban areas mental health and discussions among the youth is very prevalent and it's very positive but with that awareness i feel like over the past few years there has come a little bit of hyper awareness you know like i must basically they're called health freaks when it comes to physical bodies but right now there's some sort of health freak issue when it comes to mental health as well where you know uh, when it comes to things where you have to take counsel so mm. people think you know when when they say i need your counsel it means counseling there's much difference when it comes to considering counseling and just discussion and of course you know anecdotal advice and all could you tell us doctor exactly with your experience how counseling differs from just talking about it yes actually i'm glad that actually you have tabled that you know the question because it's one of the key points that we need to address what counseling is now of course uh, as as we have seen of course in the counseling uh, in our country is in a really you know critical point as we can see because that i mean it should be properly we'll say uh, monitored and you know scanned and say monitored specially by uh, by uh, by a reputed figure of course and by reputed uh, kind of in you know, a body which is not happening i suppose you know nowadays but that does not say that there there are you know uh, no no you know veteran uh, counselors and so on but there are veteran counselors but counseling is really important because people might think that there is this in you know, a misconception that counseling is all about giving advices and also giving guidance and etc it's not even though the, the word counseling is derived from this the word consilium which means it's giving advice it's true but uh, there are more than that actually a reaction you know you help people release emotions and you know giving guidance is there advising is there listening and talking is there and application of uh, certain therapies could be seen and uh, there are many more things like that so uh, there is this in the particular model which comes to my mind which is really important for you and for for all of us uh, which was introduced by uh, paul gilbert he says that there are three uh systems in our mind uh, one is this you know the drive system the other one is threat system the other one is soothing system now of course uh, drive system is what actually uh, what motivates us to you know uh, make after or you know go after goals right so uh, 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 um, that is motivation that we have and on the other hand uh, there is this you know the other system called threat system threat system in the sense sometimes you know there can be certain obstacles in our society or personal obstacles and etc which might hinder your drive system right so your drive system could be hindered because of this you know the threat system it, it could be in you know, a fin financial aspect you know anything like that and that is where you need to stimulate this in you know, the soothing system to when you stimulate this in you know, the soothing system you can move forward that is where we need counseling counseling would help you to to stimulate this in you know, the soothing soothing system so it helps you to move forward in that sense counseling plays a vital role it's not mere listening and talking there of course you if you if you define what counseling is you need to apply what do you apply apply knowledge what sort of knowledge knowledge uh, with regard to psychology uh, human development and uh, certain other mental health and etc to uh, address this a b c aspects a b c aspects in sense affect affect in the sense emotions feelings b refers to behavior c refers to cognition 
you just address these things so counseling is not you know giving advices like uh, now there are different types of counseling like marital counseling couple counseling group counseling like that there are different types when it comes to child counseling it's more different than that you need to think about the developmental stages also so which means you have to have some sort of uh, knowledge about developmental stages so this you know the problems uh, arise according to their developmental stages so you need to be aware of these developmental stages as well. when it comes to elderly people the manner in which we can we should uh, conduct counseling is more different right uh, than the way Definitely. we conduct counseling with you know children so this is indeed a, a broad field uh, unfortunately uh, once again in sri lanka there i mean it is not you know monitored properly and as a result of that there seems to be you know certain individuals who are not very much qualified have come into the field and that is uh, something that we need to focus on which it might have a ne negative impact on uh, this in you know, the field quite a lot to unpack there doctor mm -hmm. how about we start with exactly what you mentioned where there is you know depending on the developmental stage of the patient there are different types of therapies yes. and psychotherapies that yes. are available yes. now doctor could you please enlighten us you yeah. know exactly as a counseling you know as a psychiatrist as a lecturer in psychology you'd obviously uh, understand exactly what type of therapies there are could you please just give us a breakdown on exactly the most prevalent types of therapies that are available right now yes there are lots of therapies like you know uh, uh, biological therapy or biomedical therapy is one of those therapies that is you know quite popular because when someone is having certain uh, psychological uh, disorders psychological issues you go you know you go for medication that is one of the models right since you uh, uh, focused on this you know the developmental stage so let's let's talk how we can focus on especially uh, teenagers if you talk about teenagers they are having this you know according to developmental theories they are having this uh, uh, kind of you know in uh, psychological uh, 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 controversial points like you know uh, they want to find out who they are or oh, otherwise actually they will get confused so this uh, identification and confusion could be seen among these you know the teenagers so uh, counselors if they if they do counseling for teenagers of course they need to be aware of these things as well these you know the developmental teachings developmental principles right and according to that of course you know you can then decide uh, what sort of you know therapies that you are going to uh, give but once again you can generalize okay these are some of the therapies that we can come up with for instance you can talk about you know behavioral therapies you can talk about you know uh, 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 cognitive therapies cognitive behavioral therapies which means that you change the person's cognition and which means the thinking style thinking pattern and and after that you change the person's behavior like that so there are certain therapies like that uh, apart from that there are certain other therapies which are you know called uh, 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 what do you call a third wave therapies third wave therapies in the sense you know newly uh, uh, kind of you know uh, modified therapies which are highly prevalent nowadays and uh, globally used and even when it comes to depression now you know that uh, depression is uh, there we discussed about depression and and we use cognitive behavioral yes. therapy which means you change the person's thinking style and uh, after after changing the, uh, the thinking style it will have a positive uh, influence on your mood and also the, your behavior and now of course there can be relapses as well relapses in the sense this depression could come you know uh, over time sometimes so they are of course you know we use certain third wave therapies as well for instance we use mindfulness based cognitive therapy like that there are modern therapies that we can come up with like uh, uh, act acceptance and commitment therapy there are lots of theories and therapies right and theory without practice is blind right so which means that yeah, there is this you know the practical aspect because you don't form a theory without any experiments right you conduct experiments and then the yes reliability and validity uh, are there of course you know these factors are there and and based on that you form a therapy you form a theory and then you just apply to uh, apply with others so you can see counseling is not all about you know giving advices there it's not all about you know uh, guidance giving guidance and it's more different than that it's, it's indeed a broad field certain things that you can you can't do with you know medication could be done through you know uh, therapies of course you know it is there 
and of course i mean <coughs> it is very very vast the topic is very vast yes. and it's constantly developing yes. as well and of course considering new therapies that are showing yeah. up and of course showing results as well but when considered to the rest of the world where there's so much advancement when it comes to you know cognitive behavioral therapies and other psychotherapies yes. as well when it comes to sri lanka nationally locally there seems to be a little bit of an issue when it comes to mental health care and institutionalizing mental health care in sri lanka could you please speak to us doctor about exactly the quality of mental health care that's there in sri lanka i know we spoke about this a little bit earlier on in the segment but i'd like you to just pull on that and explain to us exactly what the situation is like in sri lanka yes it's a very good question once again now all, all the other countries they have certain associations which are functioning quite well right unfortunately i think in, when it comes to sri lanka of course you know we're still working hard on it right and we think that you know things will be uh, uh, much better than this of course you know people and especially the people who are responsible uh, will focus on these aspects you know more than this right and, uh, um, and because of the reason i think you know people if if they are in you know, a qualified individuals actually they should they should be you know at least registered and they should come under a, 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 a well recognized body so that should be happening because otherwise of course you know they will do whatever they want you know that is indeed a huge there is this you know the risk in it right that should be done properly i think um, people and all the individual responsible individuals and all the other politicians or whatever right they should focus on this aspect right because the men mental health aspect is quite important mind is a for an un undoubtedly mind is the most important thing right so if the mind is sick obviously right you become sick so that happens right so um, uh, because of the reason i once again tell you it is something that we've been talking about this we have been talking about i think it has in you know, a fallen into you know deaf ears i suppose right unfortunately but i once again say uh, this is something that we need to discuss because otherwise the field is in danger i see and uh, considering exactly you know how underdeveloped when looking at the rest of the world yes. it's a little bit alarming because the mind as you said is the most important component of a human and it what regu regulates a human yes. essentially yes. Yes. and now when we consider you know we were talking about behavioral therapies and exactly how therapy can be approached and how we can actually you know treat mental illnesses but there is a lot of misinformation going around especially in the modern age with the internet and of course there are some evidences that you know some advice has been passed down from an older generation where it's not quite correct now with a as a person that is struggling with mental illnesses and you know there's someone that you trust someone that you know has previously given you good advice when it comes to mm -hmm. other things when they give you like anecdotal advice how do you deal with that as a person suffering from mental illness how do you actually you know struggle with anecdotal advice and what do you say we should do to combat this issue you mean as a practitioner yes as a practitioner that you have you know you've probably had countless uh, patients come mm -hmm. in you know like this person told me to do this mm -hmm. they told me to do that mm -hmm. but obviously half of those are not evidence backed you mm -hmm. know evidence based practices they mm -hmm. were just anecdotal total evidence mm -hmm. i'd like to know exactly how a person with mental health can actually you know combat these and go on for a more proven type of uh, you know treatment how exactly anecdotal evidence can be combated in the modern atmosphere uh once again uh, uh, i have to say the same thing like uh, when it comes to counseling obviously it's not about the uh, individual himself or herself right we need to deal about uh, we need, we need to deal with certain other individuals like you know the family members and etc right and normally we stick to you know the treatment plan obviously so we just you know follow up and and, and we make sure whether the person is you know continuing and etc but you know when it comes to counts and especially there is this you know the uh, error that we always talk about the error of omnipotence right so which is you know uh, commonly discussed by all of you know all of us as practitioners which means that there are certain things beyond your control as practitioners right so what you can do is that you can just you know prescribe and you just can you know make the treatment plan and and you just uh, supervise it and everything is uh, with the, with everything is happening according to uh, the plan and etc but there can be certain situation that is what we find in that is what we you know come across in 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 counseling in most cases they might you know after you know they leave the place of course right uh, they might not uh, uh, go as planned so that happens 
right in counseling also it's not the problem of counseling right but you know uh, it's the things you know happening sometimes it's it's a way you know things are happening uh, sometimes uh, so once once again it's really hard to generalize you know you know it's an individual fact i, I suppose because some people you know, they move on and they just you know uh, uh, go with it they just you know go with the, the, the treatment plan right so once again it's really hard to kind of you know uh, generalize that fact I see it's always a case by case basis yeah. as well and of course considering the vast topic that is mental health there's a lot more to discuss but doctor unfortunately our time with you here yeah. ends us ends right now yes. and uh, thank you very much for this discussion and this Thanks insightful lot. topic as Thanks well so. and that's all we have for you tonight on Gen XYZ join us again next time as we discuss another topic that is controversial and of course important to the youth if you miss this program you can always watch it again on our youtube channel youtube.com/otherthanenglish Thank you for watching. Have a great night.